Okay, so it really has been a while since my two most popular series on this channel have seen a new instalment. I'm really enjoying going a bit wild with all kinds of topics right now, but I have every intention of making a new competitive history and MK meta very, very soon. I miss it. However, this video revisits Mortal Kombat X for yet another time. You always think you've seen everything with this game, and so often you're proved completely wrong after thinking that. This is another one of those times. Everyone definitely enjoyed our variation swap videos from a while back, where we take the base of one character and give them the variation of another character. It's all done through modding the PC version of the game, but it took a while and it was pretty finicky to get right. However, my good friend Ermaka, who is a bit of a wizard with mods and tool creation, has recently updated his MKX hook mod. What this does is not only let you change variations using a simple menu, but also stacking variations on top of each other. And with that in mind, let's take a character and give them all three of their variations at once. I plan on making a few videos going over some of the wild possibilities with this, but for today, let's take a few characters, stack all three variations on top, and see just how broken we can go. Alright, so I definitely just equipped the wrong move right now, right? So I'm trying to do War Gods overhead. Egg. Now, there's a few rules in place when doing this. Variations are being stacked on top of one another, right? So some will take priority. And if there are conflicting inputs, one move will straight up overtake the other. Or there is a priority system in place. Additionally, for this video, we'll be looking at characters that seem to have the fewest clashes to really maximize all three variations on at once. And that is the goal for today's characters. Variationless doesn't count in this mod, by the way, so unfortunately Cyber Sub-Zero cannot be selected using this method, as much as it is unfortunate. Okay, so we have to start with one of the poster boys here, because Scorpion gets most of his moves when Inferno, Ninjutsu, and Hellfire are layered on top of each other. But there are conflicting moves, as a few did share the same input, but it's actually worked in such a way where the most important moves are all still here. Ninjutsu gets pretty much everything. The forward two, the back two, neutral jump, sweep, the extra strings. It's totally just ninjutsu here. But then, when we look at the other variations, this is where things get interesting. Hellfire takes priority. So the down back two is unblockable hellfire, down back one is the fireball, which of course you can cancel for run cancels, and down back four becomes the aura when it's used on its own. Now, you may think, Great, Inferno gets absolutely nothing, so what's the point? But this is where the priority that I talked about comes into play. When Aura is active, you can't do another Aura until it wears off, right? So while it's active, down back 4 becomes Low Minion, which is the most crucial move to the Inferno variation anyway. On top of that, when cancelling into down back 4 with a string, Low Minion takes priority instead, which obviously does suck because you lose Hellfire's combo enders and stuff, but it's a damn effective mashup of all of Scorpion's best moves. Additionally, remember Ninjutsu's annoying overhead low mix-up between forward 2 takedown or forward 2 by itself? Now you can do forward 2 low minion as your low, so he gets a full combo of both directions. And because minion takes priority over aura when used in a string, this mix-up is always present. Super Scorpion is Ninjutsu neutral, combo extender of Inferno, and everything else of Hellfire. Probably the scariest thing you can think of when encountering one of those godlike scorpions online that have the most optimized hellfire you could face in 2021. Give them this, and uh, I'd rather not think about it. Super Leatherface is hilariously versatile, with almost zero conflicts whatsoever. Killer Stance is Killer Stance. This is the only thing that Killer gets, so it's very cool to see it here, but it does take permanent priority over Pretty Lady's low chainsaw. But let's be serious here, who's going to complain about that? You gain every Butcher move an enhanced string, which does replace the base Leatherface strings and buttons, but the Butcher versions with all this utility is honestly something I'd rather have anyway. The Command Grab, obviously, and the Launching Overhead Lunge. Most of Pretty Lady's moves stay as well, which is the different types of chainsaw throw, including the up version, which launches on meter burn. 
as you might expect, this super Leatherface variation is absolutely bonkers. He gets the mix and sheer brute force of Butcher, which usually suffers from a weak neutral, but now you have Killer Stance adding combo extensions, more plus frames and cancels into the mix, and in the full screen game you now have a multitude of chainsaws to throw at people, some of them leading to a launch. The funniest thing about these variations, slapped together, is that the combos become absolutely outrageous, and it kind of seems like the buttons never end. Super Leatherface is by far one of the most enjoyable characters I've ever sat in training mode with. I highly recommend Leatherface players with a PC get this mod and try it out for yourself. Tanya is another character that gets very little conflicts, it seems, with most of the kit in all three variations staying in one package. Now, apologies in advance, because I never was a Tanya player. She probably has way better combos than the ones I'm doing, but you'll just have to accept that. It's another mix of arguably her best specials, but there are a few missing due to conflict of inputs. Pyromancer has the projectiles and air projectiles, but the air projectiles really are where it's at for Pyromancer. Unfortunately, you don't have the purple dust, which would have allowed things to be even more powerful than they already are, which, trust me, is saying a lot. That's because Kobajitsu and Dragon Naganata take priority here, with the pole attacks coming through in strings and specials, and the Tonfatos and Swipe coming through as well. If you thought Tanya was annoying to fight before, Super Tanya gets the zoning of Pyromancer, the range and jump potential of Dragon Naganata, and the wreckers and projectile of Kobajitsu. It doesn't have the Kobajitsu strings, to be fair, but the extra buttons from the pole moves seem to work just fine anyway. It has fun combos, but like I said, I'm really not a Tanya player at all, so you'll have to excuse my clumsy hands. As far as I can tell, Raiden has no conflicts whatsoever. What does this turn Raiden into? Well, basically Thunder God in all of his glory, but with a teleport and with the orbs from Master of Storms. Now, Thunder God with the teleport sounds bad enough, but now you've taken the otherwise not so hot variation of Master of Storms, which was quite linear and not that threatening. And you've basically just given it way more ways to set up the orbs in ways that it couldn't before, such as. Thunder God strings into orb at weird moments, sometimes meter burning the orbs because Thunder God gets meter like Raiden went into this fight with a coupon, using a single orb and then far teleport on the other side into another one, creating an almost total screen distance obstacle, which was fairly training mode only beforehand, and the list goes on. This is a case where a character with all three variations takes one of the stronger variations anyway, aka Thunder God, and just gives it the fantastic utility of the other two, with no restrictions whatsoever. Raiden Mains would likely have a field day with this mod because the possibilities are pretty much endless. And you keep Vicinity Blast as an amazing reversal, so good luck. Speaking of characters with no conflicts whatsoever, I thought I'd finish today's video with an already obnoxiously strong character across the years, and of course he wouldn't have any issues, Quan Chi. Quan Chi's variations always just took base Quan and added something new but game-changing, and this mod lets you add all of them at the same time. Summoner has everything. Sorcerer spells all work perfectly, and Warlock's added specials and buttons all work in harmony with each other. It is the Super Quan Chi that we've always dreaded. Summoner zoning while standing in armored spells. Corner set play, which was already broke as hell, but now it has armor to deal with at the same time. Hard to blockables with the bat after Warlock's restand lands. The character is just a total nightmare, and I never thought back in 2015, when we were all laughing and saying, ha, hey, imagine if someone modded the game where Quan could have all three of these at once, did I think it would ever be a possibility? You take one of the craziest characters of all time, granted in the final patch not as good as he always used to be, but this completely bypasses all balance under any capacity. And of course it would be Quan Chi of all characters. Now, something tells me that we've only just scratched the surface of what this mod is capable of for creating videos and Mortal Kombat X, but I really wanted to demonstrate an even newer way of having fun with PC MKX that honestly wasn't possible before. Expect more of this to come, but to be honest, I'd love to know what characters you want to see under the microscope as well. A good chance to chat in the comments section about that one for sure. Final shoutouts to Ermaka for creating the MK Hooks mod. He really is a wizard, I have no idea how he does it, but you're efforts are very much appreciated, my friend. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. Stick around, and if you want to support me further, feel free to join my ever-growing Patreon, and I'll see you next time. Much love and take care.